time, it is not sufficient for me to be told by religious groups that uh, in the future, resurrection, end of life, going to heaven, that it'll be wonderful. That, that doesn't work. I can't, I can't handle that um, uh, vagueness. Uh, and on the, on the one hand, the, the idea that I'll be in, a, a, uh, in the, some Catholic versions, a beatific vision where I'll have this constant sense of absolute awe and, a, and a kind of a permanent catatonic stance <laughs> is not very attractive, nor is the Eastern uh, being a drop being uh, 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 diffused into the ocean of, of reality. Um, if that's all there is, I guess I'll, I'd, I'd be happy to take it <laughs> rather than total oblivion, but those wouldn't be my first yeah, choices. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. from the, 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 the Christian point of view, as, as, as you see it, what is the, the status of the individual personality at some mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. after death mm -hmm given God's faithfulness to resurrect mm, us? Mm, wow, great question. I mean, let me say first that so much of Western Christian thought in America, but also in Europe, has assumed that the name for the final state is heaven. And we've talked about heaven in terms of eternal life, meaning by eternal life, something which is going on and on and on. But many, many people have assumed that it is not spatio-temporal and that it's not physical. And if you say resurrection, some people take that as a metaphor for its exact opposite, a non-physical a non soul going on. This is a, a, an extraordinary nest of confusions, and to unpick them all would take longer than we've got. I often say to people that all our language about the ultimate future is a set of signposts pointing into a fog. And with signposts, what you have is symbols which tell you the truth, but not necessarily a photographic representation of what you're going to get right. in the future. So what are some of those elements yeah. of truth that right. you point to? Absolutely. Well, one of the first and most important things is, I've mentioned it already, the whole question of being made in God's image, and the image being the vocation to reflect God into the creation and reflect the creation's praises back to God. And because we're all made differently, we all do that in slightly different ways. And um, this is why I like the image of a vast choir or a vast <clears throat> symphony orchestra where every instrument, every voice has a different note to play, but the composer has seen them all and the conductor is bringing them all together so that together they say the whole thing which has to be said with each individual playing his or her part. What, another image I've often used is um, the stonemason in the cathedral yard, in the medieval cathedral. The stonemason is just told, you have to carve this little bit, and he's probably probably illiterate, doesn't know what's going to happen to this. One day, the mason will take all these stones and haul them up, and the mason will see his mm. little bit, meaning much more mm. when it's joined with all the other mm -hmm. stones than it had meant when he was just doing it. And it seems to me that the people we become in the present will mean much more in God's future. That's why virtue is so important, and uh, the Christian virtue theory, which is significantly different from an Aristotelian one, where um, we are practicing in the present the language that we're going to speak in the future, or we're learning in the present the instruments we're going to play in the future. And these are the character strengths, which the New Testament is full of them, like the Beatitudes, blessed are the meek and the merciful and the, the mourners and the hungry for justice people. These are characteristics which will be celebrated in the future, or the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. These are all things which which we will be more fully in the future. And, and so we are practicing in the present for the great symphony which is yet to come. But we will retain our individual uh, awareness. I, I think that's absolutely paramount because the name of the new place, if you like, is love. And uh, the trouble is the word love is so downgraded. And con but it's, it, it, it expresses a reality where God has this... Uh, all the language we use is flawed, but passionate God has this overwhelming love for affirmation of his human creatures. Um, God, God wanted human creatures to be human, not to be something else. And when he remakes us as humans, it's so that we can then be um, fully ourselves. More and, you know, when Paul says, my desire is not to be unclothed, but to be more fully clothed, mm -hmm. um, I've often thought... You know, if, if you meet somebody in the street who's been sick, you say, oh, poor so-and-so, he's just a shadow of his former self. I think what Paul is saying is that the people we are now is we are just a shadow of our future selves. Mm. 
and that there is a real ultimate you, which is God's eventual gift to you, but it will be consonant with or confluent with the people that we have been becoming by grace, by the Spirit, by our own moral transformation in the present. And our individual personalities, our first person um, awareness yeah, yeah. will be maintained in this. Uh, uh, Paul uh, says uh, in Philippians, my desire is to depart and be with the Messiah because that is far better. It doesn't sound like being a drop in an ocean. Mm. Um, I, I think for Paul, everybody God makes is, is unique, is a special individual, and God wants it that way. And that unique, I mean, one of the things people have often, philosophers have often said about evil is evil is so banal. It's like what pe some of the people said in the Nazi trials at the end, was it Hannah Arendt said? Right, yeah. It's just the banalness of it. Whereas when people are virtuous, when they're doing what they're made to do, there is a rich variety. And I think that will continue. The idea that we would sink into some homogeneity would be actually the victory of evil. And, and part of that is there'll be sequences of events. It won't be, oh, yeah. and, and, and there'll be a pro progression. I, I don't see why not, because it seems to me right from the beginning, what we know about God as creator, what we know about God as the father of Jesus through whom the world was made, is precisely that God is interested in doing stuff and in events happening. Mm. And to, to, to resile from that is to escape into a kind of thin, etiolated philosopher's mm. world, mm. which frankly <laughs> I would find really rather boring. Uh, and uh, eternity won't get boring? <laughs> no, because when we say eternity, we do have this image. You know, there's the Far Side cartoon of the guy sitting on a cloud saying, gee, I wish I brought a magazine. You know? <laughs> um, that, 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 is, that is the caricature of how a lot of people think of it. But if human life at the present is as full of rich possibilities in mm. every way imaginable mm. as we know it to be, then if the same God is making the new version, then we can only imagine that it'll be even more so. So...